Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolo Tech, and we're going to unbox and take a first look at the Droid Incredible 4G LTE. This is a brand new device by HTC, and it brings LTE to the Droid Incredible. So let's go ahead and open it up and take a look. Now this isn't out yet, it comes out oh, probably next week, although I don't have an official release date. It should be about $299 with a two-year contract, so it's a little bit expensive. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So here's the device itself. It has a four inch screen. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but here we have some paperwork. Your start here. Uh, we have probably just a normal micro USB cable. Let's take a look at that. This is the typical HTC micro USB cable and the typical wall charger that they include as well. So you have your AC adapter to USB on the bottom and that's pretty much it as far as that goes, but we do need the battery down in the bottom. So let me put all of this back, get that out of the way, and we'll take a closer look at the phone itself. So the battery should be a 1700 milliamp hour battery. Let's go ahead and open it up here. I probably could cut this and make it a little bit cleaner, but let's go ahead and just open it up. So we have a 1700 milliamp hour battery. The screen itself, you can see here's the volume controls, SIM tray, micro SD slot. So here we have volume up and down. This re reminds me a lot of the Resound, only slightly smaller. Let's go ahead and remove this off the camera. So let's go over some of the specs. So we have a four inch screen, 540 by 960, 275 pixels per inch. Let's go ahead and take this off the screen. The screen is QHD, so it's not quite up to the standard of some others, which is a little bit disappointing, but supposedly it should be nice. It has one gig of system memory or RAM, a 1.2 gigahertz Snapdragon S4 processor, and eight gigs internal storage, and the micro SD is expandable up to 32 gigs. Let's go ahead and pop the back off. So on the side here we have our micro SD and SIM card slot. So it's a micro SIM. Let's see which way it goes in. Looks like it goes in this way, but that doesn't really seem to fit. It's got a little tray here or something. Yep, we have a little SIM card tray, kind of like the iPhone 4. Looks real similar. Oh, it goes this way, rather. So it goes in like that. Uh, does not have a micro SD in it. Put the battery in here. And we'll snap the back on. Now this is supposed to have, like I said, an eight megapixel camera with a flash. We have our speaker right there. It says Beats or has the Beats audio, but doesn't come with any Beats audio headphones. Let's go ahead and turn it on. On the top, you can see there is the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and it's not turning on. So maybe the battery's dead. Oh, there we go. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack microphone for noise canceling. On the front we have another camera as well. It's a 0.3 megapixel VGA camera. The rear camera is capable of 1080p. This should have Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich with Sense 4.0 on it. So we'll wait for it to boot up here. You can see it's still booting. It is a little bit pricey. Let me give you a little size comparison while we're waiting for that. Here's the Galaxy Nexus. Here's an iPhone. So it's kind of in between the two as far as size is concerned. Somewhere in between the two of the three devices. Maybe it's the rumored resolution of the next iPhone, not sure. But as far as the Galaxy Nexus goes, this is significantly bigger. So here is Sense 4.0. Let's open it up and go to next. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Let's go ahead and boot up the phone. I set it up and I figured we'd reboot it that way. We can go right into the UI. It takes a while to reboot. This button's a little mushy on the top. It says Beats Audio down at the bottom. If you can see that. Let me change the light here a little bit. Maybe you'll be able to see it a little bit better. There we are. That booted up pretty fast. You saw that. And we'll go ahead and unlock it. It's set up. Now, I don't have my Google account signed into it or anything. But let's go ahead and go to the Internet. And it wants me to use Wi-Fi. We'll skip the Wi-Fi. Cancel that for now. And we'll go to Zolotech.com. Saying unavailable. I guess we'll wait a second and get a 4G connection. I'm pretty close to a 4G cell tower, so... It's usually pretty fast here. 
I've gotten some crazy speeds. 27 by 17 is actually the best I've ever gotten. So the screen feels good, but I'm not sure. There we go. Wouldn't load for a moment. See, it's loading. Loaded pretty quickly. Scrolls nice. Pinch to zoom is nice and fast. Go back home. You can see there's the recent app launcher. So overall feels pretty fast. Touch screen is fairly responsive. Uh, although Jelly Bean is out now, or at least the developer SDK is out, it'd be great to get that on here soon as well, since this is a fairly expensive brand new phone. It feels pretty solid. It's quality HTC uh, like materials. Uh, feels exactly like the Resound if you've held that, only smaller. And is a nice alternative to Resound for someone that wants a little bit smaller screen. Uh, but overall, I'm not sure that it's worth it next to something like a Galaxy Nexus. If you have any comments, though, please go ahead and place those in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.